So we are going to start off our look at uh, the real grade kits uh, that I've built recently, starting with Shaw's Zaku. Uh, this is actually the most recent one that I've built, but it's the earliest released one that I have. So we're going to look at them in chronological order of, uh, of their release dates. Um, so we can kind of uh, see how the, uh, the line has evolved and improved over time. Um, you might, you probably can't tell in this lighting, but um, it does have some slight color variations in the armor. Um, the arms and legs and the head probably can't really tell so much because the two shades are really quite similar, but the easiest probably to tell on the shoulder armor here. The rounded portion under my finger is a lighter shade of salmon than the rest of it, including the spikes, which are more of a more of a pink, while the uh, the lighter shade is kind of a little orange. Um, the torso armor is a little more obvious. You can see the the standard maroon on the bulk of the side skirts and the chest plates, while some portions of it are a little more of a pinkish hue. Um, the limbs and head, I think that the different colors work really well there. The torso, not so much. I really don't like that shade of pink. It really, it really kind of doesn't work for me. Um, but uh, what I do like is the bright red backpack. That armor plate on the backpack. I always liked uh, when they did it in that you know bright, glossy red. Um, Articulation-wise, uh, the real grade kits really knock it out of the park. I'm seriously impressed with uh, with the work that they're able to do with these. Uh, you've got you've got your standard universal joint hips, um, lots of uh, lots of movement there in the hip. Uh, skirt armors front and side have uh, offer a lot of freedom of movement, but unfortunately the side skirts have a tendency to pop off, um, and they're actually a real pain to put back on. You see this panel here is really really tricky to get to, to get the uh, the armor panel uh, back attached to without removing the leg entirely and then when you put the leg back on there's a good chance you're actually going to pop that back off. So a tiny little dab of glue just to kind of snug it down a little bit is probably not a bad idea. Um, back to articulation, as I said, the hips are great. The knees, oh my god, look at that. That these bulky ass Zaku legs, look how much of a knee bend these things are able to pull off. That's extraordinary. Um, but uh, much like the uh, the master grade kits that we looked at earlier, it has the uh, articulated knee panel. I mean, just look how look at that thing shift. But it also has an articulated thigh panel. There's a uh, a linkage uh, between the knee and the thigh. There's a little slider in there, so as the upper knee joint shifts it pulls that armor panel down with it. it uh, it's really, really effective. And it really, uh, uh, really manages to hold the uh, continuity of the, uh, the armor on the leg really well. Um, the cable here is uh, just the standard cylinders over a spring. I was very surprised that they used a spring uh, for this kit because that's usually something that they use for larger kits only, but um, they did a really nice job of it with this one. Uh, for feet, uh, our feet, we got a lot of movement in there. There's a good ball joint and a hinge joint in there as well. So you got lots of side to side, lots of front to back, and the toe, uh, you got a, a, an articulated toe as well as a, a midfoot hinge. Um, for uh, you know, for various walking poses, um, so there's a lot of uh, expression in that foot. Moving up the body, we got a really good waist swivel here. There's a lot of free movement there. Um, but what really shocked me when I was futzing around with this thing after I built it is that ab crunch. That is tremendous. Um, there's even a, a shifting armor panel here that allows an even deeper crunch than you might think. Because um, initially I had thought it only you know had this much, but uh, if you move this armor panel just a little bit, you can like double that movement. That is tremendous. Um, you got an opening cockpit on the chest plate there. 
Uh, not really any detail inside. There's kind of a pilot seat in there, but not you can't really see much in there uh, at this scale. There's no pilot figure for it, uh, but the door does open and close, but it's a little tricky to get your finger in there because um, it is such a tiny part, so I'm going to borrow this beam saber. There we go. And you can see that door is now is now closed. Um, a lot of good movement in the shoulder. We're going to start actually with the shield here, which is on a separate linkage, so it can move completely out of the way um, to allow a lot of freedom of movement uh, within the uh, the arm and shoulder. Got a lot of rotation. Uh, uh, you got a lot of rotation in there, uh, front and back, up and down, side to side. Um, you got your standard. Uh, uh, ball jointed universal movement in the shoulder there, bicep swivel, good double jointed elbow, really good deep double jointed elbow. And there's even a uh, a little armor panel here on the back that kind of uh, shifts a little bit when you bend that arm. Um, got a uh, lot of express uh, expressibility in the wrist. There's a lot of movement you can pull off here. Um, there's a little collar that kind of shifts along with the uh, with the wrist. Um, for fuck's sake! I do not understand why the fuck this. There it goes. It was never snapped on properly. Um. <coughs> um. There's a lot of uh, movement in the arms. The uh, shoulder, there's a lot of uh, rotational movement here, uh, a lot of front to back, so you can do some really broad, you can almost cross its arms uh, with how much that shoulder is able to uh, pull out. You piece of shit. I'm trying to review you and you're making it really hard. Um, there's a lot of rotation in that shoulder. There's a lot of uh, really good movement in there. Um, front and back, up and down. Um, you can get a lot of expression out of those arms. Uh, the shield is on a, a double armature, so it can move very much out of the way. Uh, so you can swing it back completely against the, uh, the mobile suit's back to kind of uh, get it out of the way if you want to. Motherfucker. Uh, there's a lot of movement in these shoulders, a lot of uh, free uh, front to back, and a limited amount of uh, up and down out of that uh, that clavicle. Um, you got your standard uh, ball jointed, uh, uh, standard ball jointed universal shoulders. Uh, the shield and uh, shoulder pauldron are both on these articulated armatures to uh, allow nice free movement. Uh, standard uh, bicep swivel. Uh, and you got good double jointed elbows, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of movement in there. But what's interesting is there's actually an armor panel right here that kind of shifts just a little bit uh, that I was not expecting. Um, so when you bend that elbow, you get uh, a little bit of additional armor coverage there, which is pretty cool. Um, the wrists and hands. Well, I had said earlier that. Um, that uh, the Master Grade series is kind of moving away from articulated hands. Well, this is where they're going. Um, these, ki these hands are about maybe half the size of a dime, but they are fully articulated. Not, not as fully as a, as a Perfect Grade or some larger Master Grades, like the, uh, the Giradoga has the uh, uh, individually ball-jointed fingers and a uh, separate knuckle. These ones have the standard three finger block, uh, separate index finger on ball joints, and uh, ball jointed thumb, but they all have an additional hinge uh, for better improved grasping. Um, so there's a lot of movement you're able to get out of these. But they are really, really small. Like I said, these are about, it's fully splayed open, they're about the size of a dime. So there's not a lot of size there, and the uh, Especially the index finger on this Zaku has a real tendency to pop off. Um, but uh, 
for them to be able to pull this off at this scale is simply extraordinary. Um, and finally, we're gonna uh, finally for the head. Uh, it's a standard Zaku head. Um, has the uh, the mono eye, but the mono eye itself is actually geared on a mechanism. So as you turn the head from left to right, the camera will actually turn left and right as well. So if you turn it a little bit to the left, the camera turns a little bit more. Um, so it makes for a really neat kind of surveillance camera design. I don't know how well you're able to make that out on the video, but um, it's really neat in person. Um, as for weapons, we've got our standard Zaku rifle. Uh, it holds it real nicely. It's got a, a little flip-out notch to be held in the uh, grasping hand. It can be held in either hand. Uh, you can see there's the little uh, little fold-out peg. It can flip out to either side. Um, there's the uh, articulated camera sensor and forward aiming handle. But the, uh, the magazine is really cool in that it has molded bullets on the inside. Um, very, very nice attention to detail on that. Um, it was a bummer that they only included one magazine. Um, I would have really liked to have two. Uh, so that there'd be, you know, one attached to the rifle and then one spare on the skirt armor. Um, I've always liked doing that with, uh, whenever I do Zaku's, my uh, three Zaku squad, uh, the one carrying the uh, Zaku rifle has, I think, three, maybe four magazines uh, strapped to its waist. So it's, uh, it's very well equipped. And I really wish that they had done that with this. Uh, the bazooka... Uh, very similar to the Master Grade, um, is just a single tube with some clamp-on details. Um, the, tu the main tube is molded in black, the other additional details are all molded in gray. You've got your red camera lens in there that was a bit troublesome to fit, so I had to glue it. Uh, but it's a single molded tube the whole length down, so there's no seam to, uh, to fix if you, or if you had to uh, attach two halves together. Um, other than that, not much. And it does clamp on to the rear skirt. Uh, finally, the uh, ever-present Heat Hawk. Um, one of the most iconic weapons that the Zaku ever carried. Uh, it's an energy axe. Uh, basically, the blade superheats so that it can cut through uh, enemy armor. Um, has this little clip on it that can attach it to the skirt. Uh, the clip is uh, removable. But um, the whole thing is very, very thin and very flimsy, and I'm worried of breaking it. But an especially nice touch is the blade itself is a separate piece. So should you want to uh, paint it silver or bright red uh, to make it look like it's glowing or whatever, it'd be very easy to do without having to mask it. So overall, thoughts on the uh, real grade Zaku. I really like the design. I've always been a fan of the Zaku itself. Um, a little bit too flimsy. While doing this review, I had to pause and stop several times to replace parts that kept falling off, besides just the side skirt. Um, I mentioned one of the fingers has a tendency to fall off, the head has a tendency to fall off, the uh, um, shroud around the chin vent kept slipping off, one of these panels on the chest kept popping off, the front skirt was popping off. If you're just going to build it, maybe paint it, and then put it on a shelf and pose it once in a while, these are fantastic. But if you're going to play with them, um, they're not great because they are going to lose parts like crazy. So that is the uh, Shah Zaku. I've gone on record as saying that the uh, uh, Freedom from Gundam Seed is probably my favorite Gundam type design from the last 15 years. If not the... If not my actual favorite, it's it's up there. It's in the top three. Um, Gundam Seed was the last Gundam series that I was really into. Um, and for all its faults, it had some neat mecha design. Um, the, uh, the Freedom, the Justice, um, the uh, Strike. Most of the first handful of Gundams, and a lot of the... Uh, 
uh, the mobile suits from uh, Zaft are very unique, very uh, very neat designs. Um, but uh, because of the popularity of Gundam Seed, they opted to very quickly start doing uh, uh, real grade kits of some of the more popular mecha from that series. And so far they've done uh, the Strike, um, the Strike Freedom, and either the Justice or the Infinite Justice. I'm not sure. I don't think they've done both, but I think it was the Justice. Um, but they've also done a Sky Grasper and all of the various Striker packs for the Strike Gundam. Um, and I have not done the Strike or the, the any of the other ones from the uh, from the Seed subseries, but um, save for this one because it was my favorite. Um, first thing I have to address is the obvious elephant in the room, and that is that. Um, this thing is tremendously back heavy. Unless you pose it really, really carefully or with the legs way back behind the center of gravity, um, you are going to have a really tough time making this thing stand up. In fact, I'm holding the foot and it fell over. The, these wings are just too heavy for, for a model this size. Um, it could have used a little bit more chunk in the lower legs. I'm not saying maybe some die cast, but I can't really think of a better way to finish that sentence, but it could have used some die cast in the lower body. These wings are just so big uh, and so heavy. Um, it's really, really hard to make this thing stand, unless it's in a really exotic action pose or you've got it braced against something. Um, aside from that, though, it's a fantastic kit. I really like the the design of it. I really like the aesthetic. Um, it's a very effective miniaturization of the Master Grade kit, which I believe was released in about 2005 or 2006, um, which is one of my favorite Master Grade kits of that era. I've built it probably two or three times. Um, never painted one, but always wanted to. Um, but uh, it's 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 a very effective. Uh, master grade kit and this this scales it down really really nicely um, so you got a lot of a uh, lot of movement in the wings they are actually a little bit more poseable than the master grade kit you can see the master grade did not have this extra little split between the blue and black sections um, so this one can actually break up the color a little bit more when uh, when posing and um, Actually, it, it's it's very effective. Um, I'm gonna pop the wing pack off for uh, the rest of the review, but we'll we'll take a look at, a closer look at it uh, later on. Um, in terms of posability, it's fairly it's very much like the Zaku. You got a lot of uh, a lot of expressiveness in that hip, a lot of uh, freedom of movement, um, good universal joints in all uh, all areas, good deep knee bends. Um, much like the Zaku, it's got the, uh, the shifting knee panel and the thigh panel. But in addition to that, it's got an ankle uh, shifting panel on the ankle. Uh, right here on the shin, you can see that one kind of shifts a little bit as well. So when you've got a really deep, uh, fully bent knee and uh, fully extended ankle, there's a lot of uh, continuous armor coverage. Um, and it's uh, it's a really uh, it's really effective, especially at the ankle here with the uh, the shin guard, and the ankle guard, and the way the foot is designed. There's a lot of uh, of uh, continuity of armor here in the in the lower leg. Um, the uh, ankle itself, the uh, these ankle armors I have I find on a lot of kits they really restrict movement a lot, but this one really doesn't. There's a lot of free movement there. You get some really dy uh, dynamic, uh, very wide stances. Uh, a lot of front to back, a lot of side to side, and uh, some good rotation to it as well. Uh, there's a midfoot hinge that uh, can go down quite a ways and even up a little bit, as well as a, uh, a hinged toe that's, eh, it's not fantastic, but there it is there, so there's, that's some nice effort. But you, you can get some really nice posability out of the lower body of this thing. 
Uh, waist, you've got a good waist swivel here. A uh, lot of freedom, no pun intended. And a lot of movement here on this ab crunch. There's a lot of uh, jointage here. So you can get a lot of uh, backward and forward motion in that waist. Um, in fact, there's uh, some, some uh, thrusters here on the back that actually move out of the way uh, to allow for, uh, for better uh, waist uh, crunch here. Uh, shoulders, um, I'm going to pop the shoulder armor off. It's very easy to do, um, just to uh, show this off a little bit better. A lot of uh, forward movement, um, not so much back, and a decent amount of uh, upwards movement. You got your standard uh, ball jointed universal shoulders, bicep swivels, double jointed elbows, but this one does actually have uh, an articulated elbow panel that shifts with, uh, with the bending elbow. And it's got the standard uh, articulated hands, same as the Zaku, but um, because of the nature of Gundam style hands, they're a little bit chunkier. Um, they're uh, they're much these I find are much less likely to come apart. But there's also you have the option of using uh, a set of fixed pose hands. Uh, this one, uh, unlike the Zaku, includes um, five or six different fixed pose hands. One for the beam rifle. One for beam saber. Uh, one for, uh, I think there's a wide open splayed hand, uh, and then just a fist, and uh, probably one or two others for both left and right uh, hands. Um, uh, head, you got a lot of movement on that neck. Uh, you can tilt the head back a decent degree, not as much as I would have liked. Um, forward a fair bit, some side to side tilt, and a fairly decent uh, rotation as well. Uh, there is an opening cockpit. Uh, but same as the Zaku, at this scale, you can't really see anything in there. But uh, it's nice that they added it. Um, I forgot to mention, in addition to the uh, ab crunch, there is a nice uh, degree of side-to-side -side tilt here as well. And it's, it's quite sturdy, so it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to have any uh, effect based on like how you would have the wings arranged or if there'd be a lot of weight on one side. I don't think it would. you'd have to worry too much about uh, it sagging to one side or another. Um, weaponry, um, we'll talk about... Uh, we got the standard side skirt um, uh, rail guns with the uh, side grab handles that I don't think were ever used a single time within the series. Um, so that's the body of the mobile suit there we've taken a look at. Uh, the wings, as I said briefly, they are actually a little bit more expressive than the, uh, than the Master Grade kit. The way that they open up a little bit more, you can get uh, kind of a greater breakup of, uh, of color and, um, and detail out of them. Um, I really like the way they did that. I really like the, uh, the extra little bit of hinge on that, so it, uh, it, really, it really brings it out a lot. Then the twin shoulder cannons, they took something from the mass that I really liked from the Master Grade kit that they never included in any of the early high grade kits, and that is a, uh, a mid uh, cannon hinge. Uh, in all the early high grade kits, if you wanted the cannons over the shoulders, the wings had to be directly behind the back. And who really wants to do that? Because that looks silly. Um, no, you want to have the wings out and splayed out to one side and still have the cannons over the shoulders. So they added this joint here to allow you to do that on the Master Grade kit, and they've included that also in the Real Grade kit, which is a very nice touch. Um, otherwise, uh, good and sturdy, good and solid. They, uh, they're all styrene on poly cap joints um, on the wings. So, uh, or, uh, sorry, styrene on uh, either styrene or ABS. There are no poly caps in this kit. In fact, none of the real grade kits use poly caps. Um, but uh, they're, they're nice and solidly jointed, so there's no risk of sag or uh, looseness that I've been able to notice. Um, shield, standard shield. Uh, it has a uh, uh, grab handle and a latch that will uh, 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 attach to the uh, elbow guard. Uh, it's also on a ball joint, so there is some freedom of movement there. Um, 
some nice detail on it. That actually that backside. There's a lot of uh, a lot of cool uh, reinforcing beams and struts and whatnot uh, molded in there, which is pretty neat. Uh, and finally, the beam rifle. Um, this actually does one better than the Master Grade kit did. Uh, this blue trim on the uh, the upper armor part on the Master Grade kit had to be painted or uh, was a sticker. Um, to my knowledge, this is the first time that uh, the Freedom's beam rifle has actually had that as a separate, properly colored part, which is quite amazing. They were able to do that at this scale, but couldn't at Master Grade. Um, couldn't or wouldn't, I'm not really sure. Uh, otherwise, the rifle itself, it's a little chunky. Uh, um, it looks a little bit bigger than it should, but that's probably in part because of that blue piece. Um, there's a uh, clamp right here, or a peg anyway, that can latch onto the rear skirt. Um, and a, uh, a peg that fits into the articulated right hand. It's not ambidextrous, unfortunately. Uh, there is no matching peg or a hinged peg on this one. And then the forward aiming handle is uh, likewise articulated. And uh, beam sabers are much like the Master Grade. Uh, they've got the uh, little clip. They can connect together form a, uh, a double-ended beam lance, uh, much like uh, Darth Maul uses in the Star Wars prequels. Um, and I'm actually quite impressed with uh, how they did this. I don't know if you, you can probably hear that, but listen to that click. At this scale, that hilt overall combined is about an inch and a half long. The fit tolerances on this are extraordinary. Overall, my reservations about this kit have to do with the balance issue. Um, as I said, you're going to have a real hard time getting this thing to stand up without a base or without something to lean against. Um, unless you're really careful with the way you pose the wings or are in some kind of really extreme dynamic pose. You're going to have a really hard time getting this thing to, uh, to, to, to stand up on its own. Um, but apart from that, it's a fantastic model. I really like it. If you want to attach it to an action base, or, uh, or you can lean it up against a wall or something, it is top-notch. Um, in terms of stability, it's a lot better than the Zaku. Um, the waist has a slight tendency to come apart, and of course it won't do it when I'm trying to make it happen, but there it goes. Um, actually, that's not even how it normally comes apart. Um, there's a, uh, a cross beam that attaches between the, uh, the twin rail guns uh, that attaches to the upper body and, se and often will, come separate, uh, will separate from the lower body. Um, if you're futzing around with it, it'll, it might have a tendency to do that. But um, in terms of little parts popping off, I have not had a problem with this thing at all. Uh, Stability-wise, uh, it, it's fantastic, um, but uh, you know th there's really just the issue of it falling over backwards. And see here right now, I just I got it to stand up, but you can tell I did that because look how far back the legs are from the center of gravity. So that's really what you got to do. Um, you can play with it a bit if you have you know the. Uh, shield in the, on its left arm and the rifle in its right arm kind of holding the arm out that might counterbalance it enough but um, standing is tough but other than that it's a fantastic model and I, I do I do highly recommend it